Hi yogis, how are you? So tonight's uh, mindfulness practice is, um, is a beginning meditation. How's that? So first I just want to explain what, if there's a difference between mindfulness and meditation. Um, there's not exactly a difference. <laughs> Again, mindfulness is being fully, uh, putting fully attentive to the moment that you're in now. So if you're eating or you're doing a movement pattern or you're observing something, as we've done in the past few um, episodes here, you are, you are fully engaged, fully attentive to those actions. Meditation is being fully engaged, fully attentive to doing nothing to sitting and being present. So it's helpful when you first start meditating to have a, something to work with. And usually the tool is the breath. We have the breath, as long as we're alive, we have a breath and we can pay attention to that breath. And so it gives us something to um, attach our awareness to or to pay attention to. Uh, you can meditate without paying attention to the breath by just being present for what is happening as the moments unfold around you. But our minds have things that, uh, thoughts that they like to process or roll through. Um, and everybody's mind probably has slight differences, but I have a feeling that we're all probably pretty similar. So one of the things that I did um, as a task for myself, um, when I, I had a day where I was trying to do a seated meditation and just be present, I wasn't necessarily doing a breath technique, but I was just trying to keep my mind clear and in the present moment. And of course, my mind kept thinking about other things. And so I decided that I would write down a little note Every time I caught myself thinking about something that wasn't happening in the moment, I wrote it down. And what I discovered after doing this for a while, and I did it for about a year and a half um, on my daily meditation practice to try to see if there would be any differences. <laughs> and there wasn't. So my mind does three things. Um, it has what I call the planning and list making function. And this is where when I caught myself thinking I would be um, making a grocery list or thinking about things I needed to do later, having imagined conversations, um, planning for events that weren't happening in the moment and def may or may not ever happen. Um, so that's that function of the mind. The mind likes to think ahead and go into the future. And so those, uh, that planning and list making aspect, and some people may have more of that, um, but probably we all have caught ourselves thinking along those lines. So that's the first function. Second function is it straight up has storylines that it likes to run and my uh, storylines follow three main themes. Now you might go and take a look and see if your mind sort of fantasizes stories um, and if those stories have themes. I went back through every journal I've ever kept since I was a kid and pretty much the same three themes emerged. Um, and I, I won't illuminate those at this time, but because <laughs> yours might be different. But I found three kind of distinctive plot lines or distinctive kind of character uh, uh, adjustments in my stories. Um, and so that is a function of my mind. It has a kind of fantasy or story making quality. Um, this may be more true for you. I'm a, a Think, like to think of myself as a creative person. So maybe that's a bigger part of what happens in my brain. And for you, it's a little smaller part, but probably there's some kind of storytelling aspect. And then sometimes when I'm sitting in meditation, there are um, memories that get triggered, whether it's from a smell or a sound or something that happens in the environment, or just simply for some reason, sitting um, still sometimes can um, bring up memories. And one of the things that I notice is like movie scenes will replay in my mind, or um, I'll have memories of specific events um, from my past that will just play out like a, uh, like a movie on the screen of my mind. Um, and then I'll catch myself thinking about that and then come back to the present moment. So those are the three things, that's it. That's all that ever goes on. 
Um, I found this humiliating initially because I like to think of myself as a creative person. <laughs> and so uh, it's not very creative to think of only three things uh, every time you check in with your mind. Um, but it was also freeing because what I discovered in doing this was that I didn't have to really pay attention most of the time to what was going on inside my head. It was gonna keep going on inside my head no matter what I did and well, no matter what I do. It just, those three functions are always there. And for me, it's very difficult to find a place where they completely stop. It does happen, it doesn't happen often. Most of the time, it's sort of like having the TV on in the background. And the way I think about it, it's sort of like having a soap opera on in the background, because I don't know if you've ever watched a soap opera at all, but I tuned into one for a period of time when I was a teenager, and then as an adult watched one again, same uh, one, but a, you know, many years later, and it was basically the same thing happened. <laughs> same plot line, somebody was sleeping with somebody, somebody was a twin, <laughs> like whatever. But that's the way our mind is. It's like a repetitive, cyclical um, process. It's gonna play the same storylines over and over again. It's gonna have the same kinds of thoughts that loop. And some of us might be more um, loop, like our thought loops might be a tighter pattern. And some of us, it might take a couple months before we come looping all the way around. But probably we're all about the same in terms of how this works. So why should you meditate? <laughs> well, I don't know. You decide how you wanna go with about this. but. Here's a couple things that I know about, is that there is mounting evidence, uh, scientific evidence, that meditating actually does change the neural pathways in our brain. And it changes them to more resiliency and more um, flexibility. And so meditating actually makes us smarter. It makes us more um, aware of when we're getting trapped in these patterns and loops so that we can uh, have more control over our behavior, over our thoughts, over our um, lives in many ways. Um, and it makes our brain smarter. It actually is more resilient. And as we go into aging, hopefully, <laughs> it will be um, a, a, a way to keep our minds sharper. And so those are encouraging um, data points. The way, the reason that I meditate is because I am prone to anxiety and panic. I don't know if it's a genetic predisposition or something I learned in childhood, but I am prone to the kind of um, uh, disaster anxiety thoughts. And so because of that, meditating and slowing the thoughts down and being present for what is, is one of the and mindfulness, right, which is really all I'm talking about, is just being mindful and attentive to what is actually happening in the moment and not the stories that are being spun inside my skull. It allows me to slow down that physiologic response to stress, <sighs> to calm the responses that my body has to those mental patterns so that I can be um, one, I can be healthier because I'm not being um, manipulated by my own brain. And two is um, my f physical body is put through less of that adrenaline and cortisol, that less stress hormone. And for that reason alone, um, my, uh, my health goes up. I have less uh, physical issues, right? Less digestive issues, less um, cardiovascular issues, right? So overall, a little bit healthier. So the process of meditating is to find a comfortable seat. So if you like to sit on the floor, you can sit on the floor. If sitting on the floor makes your knee hurt, and you're just gonna suffer through your knee hurting, that's not gonna necessarily be the best or must, most, um, it's not gonna be the easiest path for you into meditation practice. It's gonna bother you and it's gonna make you feel um, pain. 
And so my suggestion would be to find a way to, to be still. Now you can lie down and meditate. When I lie down, after about eight minutes, it goes from being a meditation into being a nap. And so for me, it's important to sit because um, lying down is definitely gonna turn into sleeping. So uh, I would suggest <laughs> that you sit if that's something that's true for you. If you can lie down and not fall asleep, then lie down if that's the most comfortable way for you to position your body. So I like to sit on something, whether it's a pillow or um, one of the fancier meditation cushions. I have a lot of those too. Um, a beanbag chair like I'm sitting in right now. It can be any, your dining room table, whatever uh, chair, you know, whatever you have where you can be um, present. So my feet are resting on the floor. I can rest my hands on my knees um, so that I have the opportunity to get my spine to sort of be mostly um, neutral and I can relax my shoulders and I can relax my body because if you don't relax, then those um, changes in the neural pathways are gonna be much more challenging, right? We're gonna have, and we're gonna be um, pushed towards not meditating more than pushed towards meditating. And if meditation is beneficial when it's a regular practice, right? So in the way that you can't brush your teeth once and then expect that you're, um, Dental hygiene is gonna be taken care of. You have to brush your teeth you know, on a regular basis. Similarly, you have to meditate on a regular basis to really reap the full benefits of it. So find yourself a comfortable way to sit. And as you start, you're gonna start with the breath because it gives you something to come back to. So eventually, you can let go of that technique and just be present. Um, but the breath is a helpful harness. Um, it's sort of like you know, leash training a puppy. <laughs> At first, the puppy's gonna run after every thought squirrel that's out there. It's gonna go, squirrel, squirrel. So your brain is gonna do that too. It's gonna go after those thoughts. And so if you have something to come back to, the breath is really helpful. And again, all these other practices that we've been doing, whether you're coming back to the um, candlelight or you're coming back to the movement pattern, it, it, all of those are helpful. But this one is just straight up, sit down, be present, pay attention to your breath. Now, some people, it helps to have another technique for the breath, and so maybe you count your breaths. And if you decide to count them, don't go over 10. Go up to 10, start over. Or you can go up to 10 and count backwards from 10 if you want to, but keep the number small. It will be um, less challenging than trying to count up to a higher number. Um, you can also say the words inhale and exhale as you're doing those qualities, or doing those two halves of the breath. Um, or you can simply pay attention to the physical sensation of the breath, whether it's at the tips of the nostrils or at the rise of the chest um, as you breathe. So you're gonna try to breathe normally, normally, whatever that means. Um, you're not gonna be too aggressive or do any fancy breathing. We've already done that in another practice. So for meditating, just take a deep breath, <sighs> relax yourself, make sure that you've addressed any physical needs that you have. Rest your hands somewhere. I like to rest my palm down on my knee like that, um, just because it is a, uh, uh, it's relaxing. It makes my shoulders relax and it, it feels fine. You can rest with your palms up if you like. I like to close my eyes because I tend to be visually stimulated. Um, if you get sleepy when you close your eyes, close your eyes almost all the way. So there's like a tiny little sliver of vision and let it rest on the floor in front of you or on the wall in front of you if your head is adjusted to that height. And then notice the body breathe, all right? So notice the inhale and notice the whole pattern of the inhale. Feel how the pressure change happens in the body as the inhale builds to the top. Feel that moment of pause before the exhale comes out. Sometimes for me, there's quite a long pause before the next drip breath drops in. Sometimes for me, that pause is very short, almost non-existent. Notice the physiologic response of the body breathing when you're just paying attention. Or 
For example, I notice that when I get to the top of an inhale, there's like a little bit more pressure around my face and as that exhale happens, all of that subsides. A little bit more pressure in the ribs as they reach their full expansion and then that subsides. And so that's, that's it, you're noticing the breath. Now, yogis, your mind is gonna wander. It will go to whatever those three things are for you. So if you catch yourself thinking about that stuff, just go, oh yeah, thinking about stuff, and then come back to the breath. Now, I recommend that you set a specific time to do this. And if you're new to this kind of an idea, start with a small time. Five minutes is a really long time to do this if you've never done it before. So you might start with two minutes. Um, one of my favorite um, ways to do this kind of meditation um, is to do it right before I go to bed or right when I get up in the morning. Now it's harder for me in the morning because I like, I'm a snooze alarm pusher. Um, so um, the way that I can do that is I can push the snooze alarm, kind of sit up, put pillows behind me, get myself seated in bed. And then if I fall asleep, which inevitably happens at least once, snooze alarm goes off and wakes me back up. And so you can have that as kind of a meditation, but you can climb into your bed at night. You can put some pillows behind you. You can sit in your bed in a comfortable position and pay attention to your breath and you're gonna eventually wind up getting sleepy. And when you do, you just slide into bed and go to sleep. But ending your day and beginning your day with just a few minutes, less than 10, that time that that snooze alarm would have gone off, is a great way to get a regular meditation practice. I like to refer to this as meditation. And so you can get a regular meditation practice going. And then once that gets more comfortable for you, then you can do a more formal meditation practice during the day at some point at the end of your yoga practice, if you're inclined to do yoga or your Tai Chi practice, so that you can be present for the, the whole experience that you've had um, with that practice. So yogis, I'm gonna let you <laughs> take it from here and meditate on your own or do meditation um, if that is a better idea for you. But try meditation. Give yourself a task to do it for a certain period of time every day um, and be easy on yourself. Don't start with a half an hour. Start with a little bit of time. Build your way up. You're gonna be much more successful that way and see what it does for you. If you get to the end of a month and you're like, nope, not for me, cool. But some of these other mindfulness practices might work better. So namaste, yogis, and good luck.